Hello and welcome to Grocery Pod. My name is Sean Kasednar. I'm excited to be joined again by longtime friend of the show, Carrie Berger from Crossroads. We're going to be talking about growth partners. Uh, but before I get to Carrie, uh, I want to remind you, please subscribe to Grocery Pod. Subscribing means new episodes will be downloaded for you each week. You can find Grocery Pod on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or any other platform you use. Carrie, thanks for joining me again. Thank you. It's good to be back. So we spend a lot of time talking about what to do when uh, retailers are ready to sell their business. But what about from the opposite side? Someone has to buy it. So so what about them? Very good question. We call those growth partners within AWG. And a growth partner is just someone who is in a position that they may be able to help acquire uh, somebody else's business. And so there's kind of a, you know, First place is, who's that person? What was the ideal place? Could you be that person? Why would I be right for this position? Well, it normally is going to have something to do with age. Uh, Let's be honest. Uh, If I'm 82 years old, it's it's fine. It's great. But I'm not sure that my runway, so to speak, is 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 long enough necessarily to be in the position to to want to be making a new acquisition and dealing with all that at that time. But maybe just maybe my son or grandson or daughter or granddaughter, they might be in a position. And so what one of the first things that we see with a successful growth partner oftentimes is it can be a dynamic duo, a multi-generation. We've got uh, mom and son or, or dad and daughter or whoever. And uh in that position, uh, what you have is you have the energy and the focus on the future and the long runway, so to speak, of the next generation, along with the experience and knowledge uh, and resources of the of the earlier generation. So many times when we're talking about a transition away, it doesn't have to be a transition out. It can be into a different role uh, to where you get to be the supporting cast or the supporting generation uh, to create a, a growth partner opportunity for your next generation. So that's kind of the the image, if you will, of an ideal setting. Now, obviously, we've got others that are running on a, uh, a an, an ESOP platform. That obviously is another growth partner design that makes a lot of sense because they will inevitably uh, be needing to grow in order to be able to satisfy the requirements of their ESOP. They will also have a very long timeline because they're not tied to a single life expectancy. So they tend to be very much growth partners. But that's kind of what the the, the person or the entity looks like. The next question is, well, what's sort of the the mental set mindset of of that growth partner? And the growth partner probably is going to be someone who says, I have X amount of cash. I believe in this industry and I'd like to invest in uh, doing more of what it is that I know I'm. I'm comfortable with grocery. I would like to to, to expand that reach. Uh, let's think about this. So that's that's the beginnings of what is a growth partner. Is there a typical you know business environment that 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 people should be looking for? Should you know? Is there a certain uh, success threshold? Threshold. Um, I'm not a business person. I'm just a podcaster. So I really don't know even the the correct way to ask this. But like, how I guess how successful should a business be before uh, we're looking to expand? Excellent question, actually. Obviously, if you are sitting on a great deal of debt on your current store, uh, if you're barely able to keep yourself going forward, you don't have the energy and you should not be distracted by trying to think about an expansion that's not ready. You've got to be at a place where uh, your current store is uh, stable at the very least uh, and that you've got the capacity uh, of, of staff to be able to uh, to take on a new challenge along with that. Um Certainly, it's nice to have cash in hand, especially right now. One of the big things that's happening, which we all know, is that uh, banks are charging interest rates that are heretofore unheard of for the past 10, 20 years. So we're looking at 8 and 10 percent interest on a, on a business loan now. Oh, my. Uh, that That's a lot of money to be paying out in interest. So if somebody has cash and can reduce the amount of money that we have to go to a bank for, they're definitely in a great, very great position uh, compared to everybody else because of that factor alone. But you still have to have the other piece, which is you got to have the rest of the team and the, and the stability of your own store before you really should be distracting yourself uh, with another store. So that's my store. 
I've got it all set up and ready to go and we're, we're doing good and we want to expand. Now, what should I be looking for in a store that I'm trying to acquire? Like, should I only be trying to find ones that are already successful and for sale or should I be trying to find, find ones that are less successful that I can try to turn around? That's probably the biggest question you could ask in many ways and we can't answer it here in all, all honesty, but I'll say it this way. Most of the growth partners have found their niche, so to speak. They've got, I'm really good at X. I, I do a great job with Y, whatever it is that they, that they do. And so with time, the, the really strong growth partners, they know what is the, the, the description of whom they're looking for. Having said that, uh, the question of whether they need to be successful or not so successful, you can definitely go both ways. Start by calling your AWG uh, DMs and talking to them about uh, a market analysis for that new store. You know, if it's in a town that has a great deal of growth going on and a lot of things happening that are good, okay, that location by itself really went up. Conversely, if the town is dying, as happens in some of our small communities, well, that's a factor. Doesn't mean it's a no. Doesn't mean it's a yes. It just means it's a factor. So you definitely want to look at, at all those dynamics. But if it's not being successful currently, do you have the pieces that are missing to make it successful? There's a lot of great stories of growth partners that come into stores that have been struggling and been able to make them very successful, not because they have a magic wand, but because they work hard and they They've got an idea of how they can correct some of the challenges that existed. Additionally, it's not so much that the uh, the, the selling uh, family was necessarily incapable. They just may not have had the resources. They couldn't afford to do that new rack system, which is going to cost $1.2 million. And so based upon that, they keep limping along. A new buyer being able to come in, put in the money that's necessary, may be able to, to make that thing work. The other thing that springs to mind is you mentioned, you know, niches for for different retailers how important would you say like diversification is across you know the types of stores that that people have should they do you recommend sticking with oh this is what i know and this is what i'm good at or oh this is what works over here and but this could work really well over here and and provide some like i said diversification there is no right answer to that that question <laughs> that particular question is one that really is has to be put, put down to the specific circumstances the specific growth partner uh the specific a acquisition target um th there is no broad answer to that one most people tend not to look for diversifying in different types of stores. Uh, if I run a price impact store, I probably am good at that. To suddenly then go into something that's dramatically different, I'm probably not as good at that. So most people would argue that, no, you don't diversify by by type, if you will. Uh, same thing goes. I run a really good uh, rural small store uh, set up uh, in small towns of X number of size within X distance of the nearest Walmart or whatever it is, that model is something you know to suddenly go into the big city, so to speak. It's a different world. It's a different model. Most people would argue those are mistakes. So I guess for the if I had to give generic advice, I would say stick with what you know, uh, continue doing more of that. Don't necessarily look to diversify, as you said, but Every situation is different. Every growth partner is different. Every opportunity is different. They all have to be analyzed. And the good news is you've got people like David Carl and others right here in the AWG home office that you can talk to about that. And you've got us to talk to as well. So we can help you have that conversation. It's always worth the conversation. Uh, but you have to don't go in having your heart set that this needs to happen. You may be uh, talking yourself into a very bad decision. Yeah. And so... Speaking of who to acquire, uh, do should people be looking primarily outside of AWG or should they be, you know, open to acquiring other AWG members? I'm going to start by reminding you to please talk to your DMs, uh, talk to the, the people that that know you and that uh, and that know the stores around you. They are an amazing resource. I would turn to them first. Uh, I would also coordinate with them on the question of buying outside of AWG. But yeah, the, in a in a in a way, uh, AWG has an amazing story to tell. So if you get a chance to talk to somebody who's working with somebody else you're able to to bring them to the light, so to speak, of, of this great organization of, of AWG as a co-op. So so going from outside in, that, that does happen, and, and it certainly shouldn't be a, a, a stop. In fact, it's 
could be really a, a good opportunity, but I would definitely coordinate with your DMs on that on a, re- on a regular basis. Another topic that, that comes up oftentimes is uh, acquisition versus uh, ground up building. Um, that's one that in this day and age um, really has to be looked at closely. Let's just talk through the numbers real quick. If you're building ground up, you need to budget. Well, you'll talk to your local GC, you'll talk to David Carly, you'll talk to different folks in the AWG, but you're looking at a pretty substantial dollar per square foot. Let's say $300 a square foot uh, for, for a new grocery store ground up. Whatever that price is, you then also have to take the time to acquire the land, acquire the, the, the GC, get the plans done, get it built. That's X number of months where you're bringing no revenue in, but a lot of money is going out. <laughs> Then once you get it in, it's not a store that was already there. So you've got to convince buyers to, you know, come to your store and try it out the first time. And you're going to have a growth curve in those early months and maybe years. For all those reasons, it, you know, there better be a good location that's got a really compelling reason that I need to build ground up because the opposing choice, if I could find the identical location and everything else, but it was an existing store, what have I got? I've got a clientele that maybe it isn't as big as it will be once you've done your magic to it, but it's still a clientele. I get to come in day one and maybe I'm not knocking the socks off, but I'm not at zero, which is where you're at during the construction phase. So if I spend those same 18 months, I would have been at zero during construction, just going from a starting point that's not zero and building up. How much better is that? And truth be told, when you do the numbers, most people these days are saying it's pretty compelling uh, to look at an existing store as a potential acquisition before you resort to a ground up. Nothing wrong with ground up, but just be aware it's a, it's a major commitment. There better be a good reason. And we talk all the time about reinvesting in, in your store. So once you buy that new store, AWG has all the tools in place uh, to, to reinvest in it and get all the renovations done and all of that's already here to help you out. AWG is fantastic at all of those things. That is the one of the many reasons why AWG is so special are those resources that are available throughout the organization. And yes, I like what you just said, too. If I get all excited about being a growth partner, and I focus all about how I'm going to acquire this and I take my eye off the ball in my own store. I've stabbed myself <laughs> and it's it's not going to end well there either. So you that's another part of that first question you asked. Uh, when is it the right time? It's am I at a place where I have the ability to continue to serve my existing store or stores and at the same time be able to focus more energy or new energy on, on a new acquisition? And uh, it takes some real soul searching. And that's a big part of what we have to talk about when we are assisting somebody as a retail member in that decision is, okay, where are you really at? What's, what's your real commitment? What's your real energy level? What's your, you know, cash reserves? How are things going? You know, and you really got to make a decision. Don't jump into this lightly, but when it's right, right now, the opportunities, if you are at the right place in terms of the right age, the right energy level, the right multi-generational support and the right access to cash, the opportunities to expand the grocery market, the opportunities to invest in this industry are pretty fantastic. And then you throw in the last question, which is if I've got the cash versus if I'm going to the bank, because that's the one piece that's going to be a real hard sell is if I got to go to the bank and pay them eight to 10 percent interest on a five to seven year amortization, it it really reduces how much I can afford to pay somebody for their business. Um, on the other hand, if I'm sitting on some cash, I may be able to be uh, more aggressive and get deals that no one else can get. So there's some neat opportunities out there. It's ex- always exciting to talk about being on the acquiring side. And uh, truth be told, let's also make one last statement on that. And that is, this is not a, a, a wolf and lamb kind of thing. Uh, these are, these are, both sides are good people trying their best. And truth be told, they both help each other. Uh, it does not have to be predatory. It does not have to be ugly. It does not have to be anything negative about it. Uh, the buyer is is as much of a good person as is the seller. They're all trying to do the best they can. And if you can approach it and keep your eye on that humanity of it, you will get where you need to go. If uh, there are some people that do see these things as some form of an opportunity to bully people, I don't work with those people. Uh, <laughs> 
and I hope you're not going to want to be one of those people. But if you do look at this as an opportunity to work together and benefit everybody, you will be richly rewarded for it. And it, and it, and you'll be able to hold your head high in that community because guess what? The one you just acquired, everybody still remembers the old guy too. Uh, and, uh, so it's, it's nice to be able to have that integrity and, and it, it happens most every time. And that makes a lot of sense because we've talked before about how we're at an inflection point in the industry and there may be an influx of people looking uh, to get out. And so if businesses are, you know, ready for that and ready to oh, someone needs to if someone wants to sell, someone's going to need to be there to buy and being able to keep that, keep all of that inside of AWG, you know, is just good for the whole co-op in general. Hundred percent. And I would go on further and I would say that not only, uh, does there need to be someone there to buy, but in a sense, they are, they're continuing that legacy for you. You know, this is a, this is in, in a sense, a, a, you try to keep it within whatever goals or directions you want to go. But if the best direction is for it to be continued by somebody else, you're doing each other a favor. You know, they're continuing your legacy. Most buyers will keep uh, the seller's name on the store for at least a period of time and oftentimes forever. And uh, how that goes and, and treating each other with respect makes a big difference. Yeah. If you're selling because you're just done physically, but the store is still great, then there's no reason for the buyer to take your name off of it because it's already doing well. It, they don't need to put their name on it to because it's already going great. Now, one word of warning, I will tell you, no matter how well the buyer does, there will be uh, many occasions when the sellers walking down the street in his hometown, they say, oh, it's just not nearly what it used to be when you ran it. They're being nice most of the time. <laughs> that's just, that's just, an, it's just trying to be kind to you. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. It's different. It is different is always scary. Always, always different. Always sometimes in some ways painful. But having said that, uh, generally speaking, after a while, you get used to the idea that, uh, I did my, my service to the community and I'm proud of it. And uh, I'm allowing somebody else to do it next. I think it's a whole, I think we could probably do a whole episode on what, what, retailers should be doing after they get out of the business and, and how they and how they deal with, you know, maybe still living in the same town as the store that they ran. And now that they and now they don't. We actually do need to do that entire <laughs> podcast. You're exactly right. Well, great. We'll, uh, we'll have you back for that one, Carrie. Uh, thanks for joining me again. And thank you all for listening. And please like and subscribe Grocer Pod so you can automatically hear all the latest things going on around AWG. Until next time, this has been Sean Kasednar for Grocer Pod. Mm-hmm.